you can use measurement tools to record, measure, and check the dimensions and other aspects of objects on a smart notebook page. So the measurement tools include the ruler, the protractor, the geodric protractor, and the compass. So if you want to use one of these, you simply click it and it will appear in here. Now once it's in here, it's like an object. So you can see I have the arrows there. So if I wanted to move it up and down, I could do that. If I click in here, I can move it around. This would move the uh, centimeters and inches, make them flip sides. This here, I can make it bigger or smaller. And again, just because it's an object, I can do anything that I would do with a regular object. So likewise, if I wanted a protractor, I could click that, click in here. So again, just watch my arrows as I'm moving around here. So when I see the double arrows here, I can rotate it. If I click in here, I can just move it. Now it's also got some uh, extra things here. So if I click here, what that does is it draws a line at zero. Then this green one, I can draw or I can move the arrow to make like a 50 degree angle. And now you can see here, I've got a line. So this green arrow now, if I click that, it will actually, oh, it's 51 degrees. Uh, and that then becomes an object of a 51 degree angle. Then in the middle here, that's where I would click if I wanted to make it larger or smaller. So I can rotate larger, smaller, and uh, here is where we would go to make it work like any other object as well. So I'm going to clear the page by right clicking and saying clear page. And there we go. So now I'm going to try the compass. So when I insert the compass, it looks like this. So you see the green things here. So again, it's an object. I have all my object tools. The green up here allows me to rotate it. And the green here allows it to switch sides. And then if I click here, I can actually extend where I want the line to be. So I can click that. Now notice when I see a pencil, that's when it becomes when I'm actually gonna draw. So I'm again gonna clear the page. And the, another thing you can do is you can record actions on the page. So if I go to the page properties, and then up here there is the fill effects and there's the page recording. So I'm gonna click page recording and then start recording. So if I start recording, what's gonna happen now is anything that I do, so including drawing or anything or anything, if you had the students come up and draw, you're actually recording everything that you're doing. So I would come back to the page recording tab here and I would stop the recording. Then if I wanted to play it back later, I would press play and it would just replicate what I had done before. So if there's an animation or something that you wanna do, uh, but you wanna make sure that it's perfect, you can do it in advance and then play it back later for the students. And also once you've done that, if I scroll down here, I actually have page recording things down here so I can play it from here as well. So again, I'm gonna clear this page. So again, I would have to go to the slide page here, right click on the slide and clear the page. So of course, everything we've done so far has been on a white background, but it doesn't have to be. So you can change the background color by clicking over here and then choosing a fill. So I can choose any one of these colors or I can pick more or I can use a eyedropper and I can find uh, a color that I would like. Now, remember though, when you have a solid color, make sure that the font is something that would go well with it. And so if you were gonna put a font color in there, for instance, if I were to select the font by clicking up here and just clicking there and then typing, Black works fine. However, if I had something like a green or something, it might not be great and it might be hard to read. So uh, just make sure that your colors match up. Also, sizes matter. So when you have uh, the title, you probably want it to be like at least a 28 font. Because uh, what you want to do is think about how big your room is and how big your board is and how far away you need people to be able to see it. So I like big fonts. Uh, my eyes aren't the greatest. So something like that. 
uh, and anything that you're going to actually put in text, you probably want it to be at least like a 22. So let's make it a little smaller here and just this would be text. So uh, then test it. So actually go to your board and see if that works for you. So I'm going to clear this out again. And I'm going to go back to no font or uh, sorry, no fill. Or actually, I'm going to just check. So this will happen as well. So notice I don't have the fill effects in here. That's because I have the text selected. I got to go back. So I always got to go to the select before I can get this stuff back. So now I'm going to go back to no fill, go back here, and I'm ready to continue. One thing that Smart uses as one of their big selling features is something that they call the move and reveal. So the idea is you type a question and an answer, then you hide it or hide the answer. So then you ask the question, you move the object that's hiding the answer to reveal the answer. So let's just do a quick one here. So the first thing you have to do is type your question and answer. So I've got my text selected here. I come over here and I check the color. So the color is white. That's no good. It's not going to show up. So I'm going to select black. Then I'm going to type here. Yeah, I'm going to select a smaller font. Let's say like 22. And I'm going to say, what is the national animal of England? Okay. And then the answer, I'm going to then click down here and say the lion. Okay, I didn't change the size on that. I'm going to highlight it, uh, highlight it with my mouse. Then I'll come over here and I'm going to change it to 22. And then I'm going to put it down here. So now I've got step one. Now I'm going to draw a rectangle and fill it to hide the answer. So I'm going to click on a triangle here. And then again, it's fill I'm going to make yellow the line color I'll make black and now I'm going to draw here and now I have hidden the answer so then the next thing I'll do then is I will ask the students and I could type in here uh, move the box to reveal the answer but then when you have the students you would again you need the select tool now what is the so now if you had uh, a finger you could so up on the actual smart board the students could click and move it away to get the answer so that's something that smart uses as uh, one of their big things that's one way to do a move and reveal let's try another one so first thing I can do is clear the page and we'll try another one okay so the next one we'll try is something called the erase and reveal so the first thing you want to do is type your answer or your question and answer. So I'm going to just pause here and put some questions in and then I'll come back. Okay, so using the uh, text features, I've typed in complete the number sequence, use the eraser to reveal the next numbers in the sequence, and then I put the, the answers there. Now what I need to do now is hide the answers using ink that is the same color as the background. So in this case, we have a white background. So I'm going to click away here and I'm going to come over to the pen and I'm going to select a white color. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase or I'm going to draw over the answers with white. Now that's pretty small. So what I need to do is I need to make my pen bigger. So to make my pen bigger, I would click over here and just choose a big pen. So I'm going to click this one. Now I'm going to draw with a white ink over here. So now when the students, so now when you run this with the students, what you do is they can either pick up the eraser from the board or here. So I'm going to take this now. I'll take this middle one and the students would erase. And all they're doing now is they're erasing the white ink. So if you had a yellow background, you would use yellow ink and you would pick ink that's the same color. So this is called erase and reveal. Let's try another one. So I'm going to clear this page. So we did the move and reveal. We did the erase and reveal. Now we'll try the order and reveal. So order and reveal is a little more tricky. 
So follow along, we'll try it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to type a question and an answer. So I'm just going to click the text. Uh, I'm going to check my color is black. My font is 36. I'm going to pause it, type it, and then I'll come back. Okay, so I created what is 4 plus 4, just using text, and then the answer is 8. Okay, now what I have to do now is I need to hide the answer. So I'm going to hide the answer by highlighting it and making it the same color as the background. So again, it's white, it's easier. So I'm going to click over here, I'm going to choose white, and I can still see it because it's highlighted, but when I click away, I'm going to check my select tool here, now I can't see it. Now it's still there, but I can't see it. It's the same color as the background. So what I need to do now is create a shape. So I'm going to create a shape with a different color, and I'm going to draw the shape check my select tool and put it in front of the answer now again with order so I'm gonna come back here make sure I've got that I'm gonna click it click here and I'm going to send it to the back so now I can see the answer because the the background now is the color of the shape so when I move the shape out of the way I can't see it but when I move it back so what is 4 plus 8 you take this put it in front and now you've seen the answer so that's what's called order and reveal let's try one more clear the page so the final reveal activity that smart offers is the screen shade so if you click up here you can see there's a shade I can click that and I get this thing here so again you can click this and pull it down so basically it all this does and you can see there's a little dots here uh, is it hides the screen so you can put things uh, underneath it so if you let me scroll a little bit here you can put something here shade it and then just uh, work on your your lesson and then when you're ready to reveal what you want to go to next you can just move it so again you can do it from the top as well so if you have um, you can start at the top of the title and then slowly move it down so you can just reveal things as you're ready to use them. Could come in handy once in a while. I'll take that off. So another way to add interactivity to a lesson is to create what SMART calls identification activities. So identification activities are basically just kind of drag and drop. So you can use pictures and text boxes and have the students move things around. So uh, for example, uh, I'm going to uh, take some things from my gallery here. So I'm going to say like quarter, for example. So if I do that, I can see here I have quarters. And these are Canadian uh, or American. So I'm going to take the quarter. I'm going to put it here. Now I'm going to pause and put the rest of the coins on there and then come back. So now that I have all the coins here, I can also add text boxes. So I'm going to click up here and add some text. So for example, quarter. Now I'll pause and add the rest. Okay, so I've added all those. Now once I've done that again, so I keep stressing you have to click the select if you want to click and drag around. So I'm going to just kind of move these. Then if I wanted to, I could do something like put my shade on here. Okay, then I could so set this all up and then have these kind of sitting all over the place here. And then basically you have the students match up. So nickel, dime, quarter. So matching so fancy matching uh, which they call identification activities now while we have money up here we might as well try and show something else here so you could come over here and say something like uh, 78 cents then you could uh, do another one and I'll pause this while I add some more then again I'm going to click on this so that I can move these around Okay. Then I'm going to take these coins and I'm going to resize them. So I'm going to make them all a little bit smaller. I'm trying to keep them uh, similar. Maybe a little too small. On the... Okay, so I've got all these here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to turn on what's called the infinite cloner. And I'm going to do that for all of these. So what the infinite cloner does is it allows you to make 
copies of these. So if I wanted to have 78 cents, for example, I could drag a quarter and notice it keeps that quarter there. So I'm infinitely cloning. So I've now got 75 cents, 76, 77, 78. That's because I've got the infinite cloner turned on. So if I turn that off, it only moves it. Okay, so this is something you can use for, so for 23 cents, 20, I don't know why I got so many pennies, which we don't have anymore. Okay, so uh, that's the infinite cloner. You can do that with any other object as well. So that's something that you can always turn on by clicking this and going there, offer on. So the infinite cloner would be very handy for something like music. So you could have a, a staff with a bunch of musical notes underneath it. Uh, you could have a bunch of math questions with a bunch of numbers below and have the students draw in the an or drag in the answers with numbers based on the bottom. Here, let me show one of those. I'll make one up real quick. I'll pause and come back. Okay, so I just drew a bunch of things on the screen here. So then I could say two plus three is five. Five times six is I got my zero, <laughs> 30. Nine divided by three is three. So let me add a zero, which should have been over here. So this is basically what I did to all of these. I'll move it up. I can also use my keyboard to move it up so I can make it a little uh, easier. And now I have my zero. So infinite cloner, very useful. I'm going to now also when you clear the page stuff you have infinitely cloned doesn't clear so you have to do that separately 